Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a couple weeks. I'm not showing my usual shot of me standing in front of my cabinets because right now every single door is open and it looks like somebody just dumped my house over and everything fell out. Usually in the winter, I get it picked back up. I start doing in-shop stuff, but right now it's the height of summer. What I'm working on here is the pump out of our Whirlpool dishwasher. Now this isn't the pump that sucks out the old water and sends it to the drain. This is the pump, I believe, that recirculates the water in the tub and runs it through the, the sprayers. This dishwasher, it's a piece of It has been giving us nonstop problems since we bought it. When we bought this house a few years ago, we got all new appliances and they're all Whirlpool and we've had problems with every single one of them. I can't really get on Whirlpool because it's probably made in the same factory as every other brand now. But this part has always been a problem. We'll start the thing up and it will fill, it will drain, it just won't agitate. So you'll open it at the end of the cycle, steam comes out, and the soap you put in is just sitting in the pile down in the bottom. So I isolated it to this by checking the voltage across here. I ran it through a cycle and as soon as it got to that point, 120 volts, and this thing was dead. So I punched it, and it started running. This is the problem. It's between 100 and $130, and I don't know what could possibly, how much can go wrong with this thing. It's a motor, and it turns a plastic thing. So I'm gonna tear it apart, and save myself, and maybe you, 100 plus dollars. Let's see what we find. Okay, extremely obvious breakthrough. I don't know how I didn't think of that before. Okay, well that's gross. You can really feel those permanent magnets. Okay, I'll pop that off. Ew. I'm gonna clean that up. Probably to people that have more money than me, it would be worth $100 to them to not have to deal with this. But if given the choice of 53 Chevy parts or a dishwasher part, I will take the car parts. I'm gonna go rinse some of this stuff off and be right back. Okay, I am onto something. First off, look at all the scoring. You can tell that's been rubbing. But even more important, look down inside here. There's really heavy scoring on one wall. And if you look at the bushing down in the bottom, it's kind of hard to see, but it's ovaled out in the direction of that scoring. So I'm gonna to try to get into that and see what is going on with that piece to see if I can't just fix that and not have to replace the whole motor. Okay, so I got the motor coil out and it is no help getting to that bushing. I thought that black piece down there was attached to this black piece here. It is not. So if you ever do this yourself, don't bother taking this off. But now that it's off, I am not sure how that is held in there. Okay, pro tip. Use a quarter inch lag screw, push it down in there, turn it, I don't know, quarter turn, till just till it's grabbing, pull it out, and the bushing comes right out. Of course, I still don't know if there's any point to all of this. Yeah, you can clearly see that it is worn totally off kilter. This is apparently the entire reason that motor won't work, because it makes sense that it would get stuck against the sidewall, and then once I would just give it a good knock, it would move the shaft back to the center, and then momentum would keep it going. Still scoring the hell out of the wall in there, but I don't really care about that. 
So I'm going to do some looking and try to figure out what is this, what is it made of, and what can I replace it with. All right, everyone, I'm about to call it a day here. First, let me rant for a second. This appliance is about three years old, and that is how much that bushing has worn out in just three years. And that is just a regular family of, well, between two and four, depending on who's in school and who's in town and all that. But that's just a regular family use, and the thing's totally worn out. And it's been giving us problems for at least a year. So, I mean, it's a couple years old before it started giving problems. And we'd already had the discharge pump replaced in like the first few months. It was under warranty, so I didn't deal with it. I just sat back and watched the guy replace it. So that's really annoying. You know, I understand that you gotta kinda weigh the pros and cons, but come on, a couple years, nobody buys an appliance, a major appliance, expecting it to live as long as a gerbil. So that part of the rant out of the way. Second part of the rant, this ridiculous assembly. You know, you've got that goes on there, the bushings in there, that little seals in there, then you got the screws, then you got this thing, then you got the coil. This is how you buy it. If this bushing goes bad, this is what you buy. At least the place I was looking, it was around $130 usually for that part. Now you could also get this big circle it's so big I can't even get my hands in the screen, but about a foot diameter that bolts into the bottom of the dishwasher holds this as well as a bunch of different uh, sensors and doodads and it is also about 130 bucks, which means they're, somebody's making a lot of money on these if they're selling this for the same price as that whole thing. So, <laughs> moving on from the rant portion of this, this is a graphite bushing. The bushing in here has to be able to be submerged, so you have to be a little careful. You can't lubricate it. I mean, you can, but it's going to be wet, so it's not going to last long. So I did order a piece of graphite-filled bearing bronze so I can just make a new little bushing and it should work. I have a piece of regular bearing bronze, but I think the graphite would be a nice addition since I can't get to it to lubricate it, and even if I could, it would wash away. Whatever I do, at least last as long as that. That said, this bearing has quite a bit of slop in it as well. I can't seem to get this piece off. I assume if I did get it off, it would either be broken or it wouldn't stay on if I pushed it back on. So I'm just gonna leave well enough alone. In addition to a piece of graphite filled bearing bronze, I have also ordered a little tiny ball bearing that is plastic with stainless balls that can be submerged and doesn't have to be lubricated. But anyway, that order has been placed. One of those two items work. I'd really like to try to stick it to the asshole that designed an expensive all-in-one part with a tiny little failure part that they could have just as easily overdone to not fail so quickly. That's my rant. I'm gonna go inside. I might get that stuff tomorrow, but more likely it's gonna be two days, so. We will bring you back then. See you later. All right, welcome back. It's been a couple days. I got my bags of crack, and here's what I'm going to try to replace that bushing with in that motor. So, like I said, the OD is just a hair larger than the original bushing. I think this is 5 8 and the original, okay, it's actually, we got about 5.35. So, I'm going to take a 5 8 drill bit and just kind of by hand run it in there so this will sit down in there. I do have this problem of slop, and that's just because I couldn't get a bearing with, you know, if I got a smaller ID so that it would actually fit, then the OD was too small and it would be sloppy. And I thought maybe I could just take up the slack with a little bit of heat shrink too. Uh, cause I think that'll be strong enough for this purpose. It's not like this is going to be running a table saw or something. So I'm going to mess with this and I'll bring you back. All right. Quarter inch aquarium tubing actually fit about perfect. Not that I think anybody is ever going to do this, but if you do, 
Let me know. I'd love to hear that I saved somebody some headache. All right, a word of caution. Don't put too much pressure on this. I gotta snap this thing back together. I've now brought you back because I think I'm about to put this back together. Um, this is a 5 8 OD, but for some reason it wouldn't fit. I think maybe it had to be pressed in. So what I did is I went 1 30 seconds over and drilled it out to, what is it, 21 30 seconds, I think? Yeah. And I just did that by hand, just with the drill, because it was plastic and it was so close. I'm going to put this back together, but I think I may have a winning solution here. It's not like I have much to lose. I mean, if it fails again, then I'll, you know, I might just end up buying a new motor eventually. But trying to save that expense right now. So that is, seems to be working at least as well as it was before. Again, I don't have much to lose. I don't remember which way this was angled. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my video. But then we will uh, be inside and I'll meet you at the dishwasher. Okay, trying to see if we fixed it. You can hear it filling, which it always filled. The big test is after it's full, if it runs or just sits there. So, yes, this is our crappy Whirlpool dishwasher. It has had nothing but problems. Here is our crappy Whirlpool fridge, which is now, what, maybe four years old? And the water still tastes like plastic so bad that you can't even drink it. So this whole thing is just useless, not even used. Here's our crappy Whirlpool range, which is dirty right now, I apologize. But it doesn't always light. Every once in a while when I have to make some food, it won't light. So I'll actually climb in there with the cigarette lighter and light it. And here's the microwave, which usually works, but every once in a while the time flashes on it or the display flashes. Something weird happens, I don't remember. It usually happens to my wife, and then when I come in, it's not doing it anymore. But anyway, that's a tour of our Whirlpool appliance suite that sucks. Back to this, it's running. And it's actually much quieter than usual. So there you go. I guess that's gonna be it for this one. I don't know if anybody's ever gonna actually do this. It just drives me crazy when manufacturers make big parts that you have to replace instead of just being able to replace that little bushing. And what I did right now, it works. You know, I'll keep you updated as to long-term how it works. Only time will tell. Right now it's running and three days ago it was not, so. I guess we'll see how it goes. I'll have the part numbers in the description for the bearing, the model number of this, and the manufacturer number of that pump. I think that's it. So I'm going to let these dishes wash, and I will see you later.